Today is July the 29th, 2019. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University. And today I am in McAllister, Oklahoma to interview Christina Campbell. And this is part of our STEM Areas in Women project. Uh, and we're with the OSU Library. And we're in the Oklahoma Department of Transportation office here in McAllister. And Christina is transportation specialist for the department Oklahoma Department of Transportation and has been since 2013 mm -hmm. and also a crew supervisor. Yep. So before we get into her work, let's learn a little bit about her, uh, beginning with when and where you were born. Um, I was born on December the 9th, 1988 in Herling, Holland in the Netherlands. Oh, you'll have to explain that. Yeah, how did that come to be? <laughs> uh, both my parents were in the army, so we traveled a lot and then we finally settled here. Were they from Oklahoma? Um, my father, well, no, not really. My mother's full blood Puerto Rican. My dad's from Spain. So, then why Oklahoma? Um, it's my grandparents. My father's parents decided to settle here, and when they decided, when my parents decided to leave the military, um, they decided to come to Oklahoma. Puerto Rico was just kind of crazy at the time, but. Um, we settled in Ada, and then my dad found a job as um, director of rehab at the hospital here. So we decided to make the move over to McAllister, and my mom was stay-at-home mom, and my dad just took care of the family. So, how old were you when you came to Oklahoma? <clears throat> I was four or five years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you have brothers and sisters. I have a sister that's a year older, and a brother that's a year younger. Okay. Well, then elementary school. Where did you go? I went to um, Lakewood Christian School, it's a private Christian school here um, for a few years and then I went to Frank Chambers School here in McAllister till eighth grade and then um, I moved over to Savannah High School for all of high school. And graduated from high school when? 2007. 2007. Mm -hmm. Centennial year for the state. Yeah. And did you have a favorite subject? I did, it was science. I was really into science and I was, um, I really wanted to be a veterinarian growing up. Love animals, love them. Um, then went to OSU right after high school and got in the vet program and um, come back home for that summer and I never went back. <laughs> so I came here and um, well, I started at um, the uh, Department of Human Services and it was a great job my first state job and um, it just wasn't for me I'm outdoorsy like you know change of scenery so I applied for this job thinking I'm just gonna be out flagging traffic or completely opposite had no idea what I was getting myself into it turned out I love I love the job it's great it's it's perfect for me well I have to ask why didn't you go back to OSU? What was the, what was the deciding factor there? Um, life just kind of happened. Okay. I, um, you know, got set, settled down, got married, had children, and it's just a little a little tough to to get back into school when all that starts happening. Where did you live when you were on campus? I lived in Kerr Drummond Hall. Kerr Drummond. Okay. Mm -hmm. What floor? Seventh. Pretty high. Seven. Yep. <laughs> yep. Did you, well, you were there for a short time, but did mm -hmm. you have a favorite professor? No, not, not really. really. Mm -mm. And you didn't work while you were there? Yes, I worked at Walmart and at Petco. Okay. <laughs> yep, I had well, two jobs. Petco keeps you in the animal or yep. pet pet business, I guess. It did. Mm -hmm. Okay. And would you come home while you were there? Did you get home so you can come back? I came work? home every weekend, every single weekend for that whole year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what did you do for Department of Human Services? What, what position were you? Um, I worked in Child Welfare and Adult Protective Services, just um, screening applications. I did that for 10 years, so. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty hard job. It is. <laughs> it is. And so, I was reading though that you went to, you did go back to OSU, but maybe not to Stillwater to do an associate degree. Mm -hmm. I did the, um, the survey program through OSU in Oklahoma City. Okay. Mm -hmm. You had to drive back and forth, or was it online at no, that time? No, it was completely 100% online, okay. and if I had to do like any exams or testing, they would just proctor them here in McAllister. Well, that worked out, it was, too. Yeah, it was very convenient. 
and they're meant to be. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So when you first started with the Department of Transportation, did you actually get to flag? Were you a flag? No, uh, no? They, no I had to, um, had to cut a lot of brush and uh, had to walk a lot. There was a lot of walking, a lot of carrying equipment. I mean, it was a lot of manual labor, not what I was used to. Do you think they, they because you're being a female at that with that type of job, do you think they would have, I don't know how to phrase this question, did they show preferential treatment or? No, not really. Um, I was selected out of a group of 10 and they just said I just stood out. I was just, they thought I was more compatible than the others with the employees they currently had. So, um, and it turned out we all, we all got along and, and we worked great as a team. Any other females on the mm -hmm. team? There wasn't at the time, but I hired on a female two years ago. Okay. So I'm trying to influence <laughs> that within ODOT as well. Well, how did you get interested in the surveying part? Um, <clears throat> I had no idea what surveying was when I hired on. They didn't really explain it to me in the interview process. They said it's just a, one of those jobs you just gotta jump in and see what it's all about. If you like it, you can stay. If not, you can move on. And um, I got in there and it was um, right at the end of summer. It was very, very hot, it was in September. It's very, very hot, long days, and uh, we work four 10 hour days, so they're, they're long. And, um, you know, I was low man on the totem pole. You get here, you get the trucks ready, you get them loaded up, get your water jug, and you get out there and you don't come back till five o'clock. And, uh, I mean, you just stay at it. And, uh, I, you know, I started getting in shape and I was outside getting a nice tan and I couldn't work on my own. And it was, I mean, it was really nice. A few perks you wouldn't expect yeah. it then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how heavy is this equipment that you were having to get? Um, we do have some equipment that weighs close to 50 pounds. And so you just kind of, uh, you learn to utilize certain employees in certain areas. So we have, you know, we have a male on the, on the crew, you know, hey, you want to get that one or, you know, I'll get it next time or, um, but yeah, it's, um, it's a little challenging sometimes. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest surprise? Um, it was, let's see, I have a lot of, um, I've run into a lot of, well, I don't want to like point anybody out, but I've run into some people that we work with that, that we need to collaborate with that are very, I guess you say old school and I get a lot of, well, this is a man's, a man's job. You know, this is not a woman's place. And uh, people like that are, I think what fuels me to stay here and to show, you know, hey, I can do this and I'm no different than anybody else. But yeah, that's my biggest, my biggest hurdle. More customers or more Co co workers. It's not people with ODOT. It's more, you know, um, utility companies that we have to collaborate with on, on projects, consultants, people like that. Yeah. In that situation, how do you, I mean, do you, you know, put on your ear? <laughs> yeah, I got to remember I'm representing ODOT. So I try to be, you know, very polite and say, well, you know, thanks for your opinion. And I like, you know, I'll just try to take it as constructive criticism, I guess, but I don't let it, I don't dwell on it. I don't let it get me down. I just, I know it's something I love and that I want to do. And so I just, it's just like I said, one of those things that fuels me to keep on moving forward. Added pressure to do a good job mm -hmm. so they can, so they can't say I told you so. Right. Yeah. So you can say I told you so. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> well, how long did it take to get your your survey to do the survey it's associate so two years mm -hmm. but if you were going part-time well I went so I um I applied I enrolled in January for the spring semester that was my first semester um I had already done all my basics for the vet school so I had all those out of the way um I enrolled for the spring and a week before classes started. I found out I had cancer. 
and um, I called my chief in Oklahoma City and I said, hey, um, you know, I've got this going on. What do you think? Should I, should I back out of this semester and see how it goes? And he said, you know, that's up to you. You know, whatever you, whatever you decide to do, we're here to support you. I said, all right. So um, I had enrolled in a full semester, 12 hours. And me and my husband talked about it. We've got two boys. And at the time they were three and six. And uh, it was a difficult decision, but we said, um, let's just let's just see how it goes. So I stayed enrolled and um, had two surgeries that semester to remove the tumors. And the college was amazing. They were so supportive and understanding. And um, I passed that whole semester. And I went in for, I had enrolled for summer semester and I enrolled for a full semester and um, I found out that I had to do radiation. So I finished up the semester, the summer semester, and I said, we'll push off radiation to the end of the year. And uh, so I enrolled for the fall semester, did a full semester in the fall started radiation it was actually on my husband's birthday that year in november and uh i did my first round passed everything that semester re-enrolled for the next spring and uh, found out i needed to do one more little round of radiation for that next summer and uh i said well you know i've done it this this i've gone this far let's just keep doing it and i enrolled for the summer semester did a round of radiation I uh, found out it was cancer free after that, and then that following semester I finished. So it took all of two years. Wow, you mm -hmm. had stamina for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were you working at the same at the I time? Was. Working plus carrying 12 hours plus keeping the family. Mm -hmm. How did you juggle all of that? Just the support from my family, from ODOT, and from OSU. I mean, it would not have been possible without any of that. You had to be an expert at time management. Yes, it was. It was. My evenings were, you know, I get home and I'm just focused on that computer, just getting my work done. And my husband, he would take care of the kids, keep them fed and keep them occupied. And it was just a constant support I had. It was amazing. So what year would you have finished then with the associate? What year? I, I graduated in 2000 and the end of 2017. 17, so mm -hmm. fairly, fairly recent. Mm -hmm. It wasn't required in order to keep the job. No. You just wanted to do it. It was, it's a requirement if you want to obtain your license, your professional land surveying license. So um, I'm the supervisor here, but I have a licensed surveyor in this office as well. And he is my, my um, supervisor. And to obtain that position, you need to, have to be licensed, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. What kind of classes would you take? I mean, I don't have a like you. I have no clue. Um, well, you have to math in there somewhere. Yeah, you have to take every math class pretty much available. <laughs> um, history, history is a very big part of it. To see, you need to understand the history of our land. Um, a lot of presidents were surveyors. Um, it's very, it, it plays a very important role in how the land was obtained and by what means and whatnot. So it's very important to have an understanding of that. Um, there was a lot of uh, business in there as well, since a lot of people that take these, this course, um, they open up their own private companies. So they need to know how to run a business. So there's some business classes in there. And um, that's pretty much it pretty much the main part. Not cartography, mapping, or? There is a lot of photogrammetry, yeah. There's, there's a lot of photogrammetry and mapping in there. Um, not not really what us at ODOT, in my position, we don't, we have a department there in Oklahoma City that takes care of a lot of the photogrammetry, but it's nice to know all the in and outs of every department so you can see how it all comes together and works. Were there other females in your classes? Um, I seen, you know, I, we had these little study groups online and there were a couple in there that I had noticed, um, but it was mostly male dominated. What was the hardest class? Um, I had a, a route surveying class and it was, 
It was very challenging. It was um, some of those, you know, a lot of it's self-taught. You have your, your instructor will uh, post your lectures and whatnot. And uh, you only get a week to finish the, um, the assignment. I say a week like it's not very long, but <laughs> when you're working and you have kids and all that, and you finally have time to sit down and, and look at it, it's, and then you try to process it. And then if you have questions, email the professor and they need to hurry up and get back with you. And, and you just feel like you're bracing against the clock all the time. But that route surveying class, it's not, it's not, um, geared towards, I call it state surveying, because I feel like state surveying and private surveying are very different. So um, it wasn't something I was familiar with, so it was very, very challenging. Were any of the professors female? No, no, mm -hmm. not one. <laughs> oh, say, so, so tell, tell us the difference, what you're thinking between state and per personal surveying. Well, that's <clears throat> something I can think of. Yeah, um, yeah. A lot. The majority of it is on the private side, time is money, kind of thing. And um, with the state, you know, you have your deadlines, but it's a, it's you get a little bit more time to finish out these surveys. Um, we don't we don't go in and do construction surveying. We go out and. They'll tell us, okay, we've got this stretch of highway that we want to add shoulders to. We need you to go out there and show us what is out there. And so we are the first step in that process of, of that change in that highway. So we go out and we, we do the topo on everything in that scope and we submit it. It goes to Oklahoma City and they design it. <clears throat> and I mean, this is, this is a process that takes years. And um, they design it draw it up and then once it's in budget we're ready to get started and so um, ODOT will contract someone out or or uh, have you know their crews go out and start construction on it and it's it's like I said it's a process it's just for that point the, the land has already been you know whose it is yeah. you don't have to get into title abstracts and all that and all those right that's that all point. of our that's all in our um, our job description we go we go to the courthouse and we research the deeds and who owns what and how much of what and we put that all together for them to okay we're going to buy so many acres off this person and so many off this one and yeah that's all done that's all of our research it's not already done okay. yep <laughs> by, by an easement yep they can get complicated they can <laughs> who has to approach the property owner is that something your, your, your group does? Yes, um, we like to do it as a group. Um, and that's the very first thing we do. We go out and get permissions to be on people's property throughout the oncoming months. That doesn't always go smoothly. No, <laughs> no it does not. <laughs> if you had some contentious moments, uh, yes. I take it. <laughs> yes, quite a few. How do you work those out? Um, you know, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt and um, say, all right, well, you know, if you change your mind, let me know. If not, then just skip your property. I mean, they are just gonna, we'll just let Oklahoma City pretty much take care of that part. But we try to do as much as we can from the beginning and try to be very polite and courteous and let them understand we're not trying to take any of their land away. We're trying to protect it. And they offer pay to pay for it, the state? Yes. Pay for some of it, I would yes. think. Do you have to be involved in that negotiation no. part then? No, that's all out of my hands once I hand the survey over. <laughs> yeah. That's a plus. That's a plus it is. So you're, it's actually, are you the one that actually talks with them initially, mm -hmm. you yourself? Yes, me and we'll have, I've got two other crew, um, crew members on my crew. And um, like I said, we like to go out as a group because sometimes it can, you know, you're out there in the middle of nowhere and you know, it just, it's better to have a buddy with you, so. No matter if you're, no, no matter your gender, I guess, mm -hmm. it's good to have a second, yeah. a second one this day and age. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably one of your bigger challenges mm -hmm. then. Yeah, we do like to, um, I remember when I first started, um, it was me and one other <clears throat> coworker, and 
if he was gone sick, I said, oh, well, I'll just, I'll go out by myself. I don't mind. And are you sure? Are you sure? And, yeah, I don't mind at all. And, you know, if we were close by on one of these highways, they, you know, my boss at the time, he wouldn't mind at all. But if we got, we have a job in Pecola right now and it's, um, it's almost two hours away. I mean, something like that, I wouldn't go out by myself. But I just remember it was six years ago, I was going out there in the field by myself. And now I will not send someone out by themselves. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter if it's right here next to the office. I mean, it's just not good to go out by yourself. Is that written in the policy or just some personal preference? No, it's not. I don't think it's really written. It's just something that we're all trying to practice. It's just to watch each other's backs. Safety first in mm -hmm. numerous ways. Yes, definitely. So what would your typically, your normal typical attire for the today is, is it jeans and shirt like today? No, it's pretty much just jeans and um you know, we do have just regular work shirts and then just hair thrown up or in a ball cap. Yeah. And your shirt has ODOT, I guess. Yeah, so we do. It's the bright yellow with the reflective stripes and the ODOT. Yeah. So they know you're official when, yes, when you show up. Definitely. Huh. Mm -hmm. So you get started on a normal day at, at eight or is it begin earlier than that? Um, we work seven to five thirty. Mm -hmm. So um, usually get here around seven, get the trucks loaded up and try to get out of here by 7.30 and on the job site as soon as possible. On hot days like we've been having, we might change our work hours to come in an hour earlier or whatnot, or we might work half a day and come in and work inside the rest of the day. So for you, what's a typical day like these days? Um, for me, um, I am working to get my um to sit for my licensing exam so i um i look over my pls's shoulder a lot during the day so we spend a lot of days in the office and i just watch over his shoulder on what he does and he just tries to share as much knowledge as possible we have a lot of office work that we do we do a lot of drafting so if my crew goes out and shoots a lot of structures or bridges or whatnot they bring it in um, sometimes I'll draw up their structures for them, just kind of stay ahead of the game. But yeah, it's mostly an office day for me every day. So draw up, it's not computer, it's by, is it by? It used to be by hand, but now it's all like in a CAD software on the computer. Well, that's another skill set mm -hmm. you have to develop. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So to, to get a professional license, you have to be an apprentice, it sounds like, for a while. Um, you need to have your two-year degree and um, at least six years of experience to be licensed. So to sit for your first exam, you need to have, um, I believe it's your two year degree and four years of experience under a licensed surveyor. And um, to sit for your second exam to actually receive your license, it's the two years plus six years of experience. So where are you in that process? I, this September, on September the 9th, will be my six years. So um, I sat for the test once already last year, the first test, and I did not pass. And so I'm planning on sitting for the next test within the next month. So hopefully by September 9th, I'll have that test taken and I can sit for my licensing exam. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there are there uh, study guides? <laughs> mm, there, study guides? there is, yes. And it's... Um, the college offers some courses as well to kind of help you prep for the exam, but it's it's very tough. It's very tough. It's very, there's I think only like a 30% chance um, pass rate for first time test takers. That's kind of like the CPA, very few, mm -hmm. they say pass it on the mm -hmm. first go around. Yep, it's an eight hour exam, 110 questions, and it's, it's very difficult. It takes some good brain power that day. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, under other circumstances, is it would be hard to find someone that's willing to apprentice you? I mean, to be to be your. Um, what do you think? I mean, I don't think so. I think there's a lot of companies that that try to open their door for people to get that um, experience, um, including ODOT. I mean, they've opened their door to people fresh out of college here just within the last month. They've opened up two positions, floating positions, and it's for people that want to get that experience under their belt so they can sit for those exams. And I think it's great. I mean, we're all about, um, we're all about 
helping each other and getting the um, education and training that that you need. And I think it's I think it's a great a great thing what we've done. But I don't I think there's a lot of um, the private companies. I see a lot of them opening their doors to those kind of people as well. Is there a shortage? Very. Oh, that may very be. big shortage. That may be. I mean, it is more. It's very hard to obtain um, a licensed surveyor for the state just for the sheer fact that our income level is nowhere near where the private side is. So it's very hard for us to retain these licensed surveyors. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity here in ODOT for people fresh out of college. I mean, it's a, it's great. So how much difference in salary? I mean, like twice as much or? Yeah. I mean, something like this ballpark. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there'd be some competition for the private, out in the private sector part. Definitely. Any thoughts of going that way once you finish? I don't, I don't think I'll ever leave ODOT. I think I'll stay with ODOT and eventually just open up my own kind of side business. And since we only work four days a week, that's something I can do on Fridays or Saturdays. And we could just, you know, make it work like that. But ODOT has helped me so much throughout the years. And um, I just don't ever see myself leaving. They've treated me so great. Any any desire to switch offices? I mean, from McAllister into another field officer or go on up to the state list? You know? Well, yeah, there are. I do have a goal of becoming the, um, well, first becoming the first female PLS for ODOT. They haven't had a female yet, so that is, that's my goal. Uh, the next one would be to become the first female chief of surveys. So that's out of Oklahoma City and that's just, they're over the whole state. So we have 11 crews and they oversee all of the operations. So that's that's my and About how long plan. would it take to get to that to that level? I mean, for anyone, not just, just you, to get to the um, chief, chief level. I think it really depends on how long the current chief decides to stay in that position. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But there's room for everybody to move up, always. And what would they, what would that position do? What would the, I don't know what the chief, I mean, or besides seeing the whole state, what different, what would be the different things that they would um, do? They, I believe they are pretty much just responsible for going out and bringing in the work for ODOT. Yeah. Making, making those big decisions. Mm -hmm. huh? Yep. Well, when you're, so you've already done some surveying, I take it? Yes. Some survey. What's the most unusual thing that you've done survey wise? Probably not that much, not much odd for the state. No, it's pretty much all the all the same. Um, Hard to find the markers. Yeah, that's definitely a challenge, but I love that part. It's, um, we call it doing land ties. So we go out and find all these corners, all the section corners. And um, my uh, previous supervisor, uh, before he retired, we were on a project and they have, um, so corners were originally set with stones and um, I'd never found a stone before, but we're out looking for this corner and he said, it should be a stone, a rock that has this chiseled into the side of it. Okay, so we're kind of in this swampy area and we're just looking and we're looking and he goes and he stands right next to this rock that's just sticking out like a sore thumb and we're just looking and, um, he said, come on over here and look over here. And I get and I said, oh, hey, there's a rock right there. We turn it over and there it is. That's the rock. And it was my first stone that I had found. And it was a very exciting day. I have a picture of it. It was awesome. Um, but it's really cool just to see because those rocks, I mean, they were set years and years and years ago. And it's just really neat to see them still sitting in that original place with those carvings on the sides of them. Some of them have been moved, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Moved or taken home or. Oh, well, people yeah. might not know what they mean or mm -hmm. they do know what they mean. Some of them might know. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Intentionally moving their property line? Mm, possibly. <laughs> that does that. I guess that does happen. Yeah. And realistically, I guess it does happen. Mm -hmm. Some of those early surveys would have been part of the land run. Mm -hmm. I don't know about down in this part of the yeah. state so much. Yeah. So has it have from 
do they still how do they mark them nowadays not with no not, we not have with we have um oh, those metal rods or whatever yeah is. like the pieces of rebar and then we put like a it's a plastic cap on top of it that has their pls number stamped on it okay I see some of those on sidewalks so i wasn't mm -hmm. quite sure yep what that, uh, they can't be moved easily mm -mm. no well some farmers probably would take you to task if you... oh yeah yeah those are my favorite we've got some land out east of here and um we go out we went out and found some corners and it was it was really interesting but that's the ones you find that are preserved or out in farmland or you know mountain land that's not being utilized and so we get out there we get a, a project assigned to us and i get to looking and seeing where is it at and if there's a lot of subdivisions or whatnot in there and so oh, okay this is great this is out in the country and we're gonna find so many cool rocks out here and get to learn about all the history about them and it's just really neat and some there's a lot of farmers and landowners that um, try their best to preserve it and they'll put things around it so if someone comes out brush hogging or something they don't disturb it and it's still in its original place so it's pretty interesting would they mark just the section corners is that what you mean mm -hmm. just yep. just section corners? yeah the section corners on it yep Mm -hmm. the, and the, so the history you would want to know who or more right like I, I'm I I think it's really neat seeing what year it was set in because you know there's some set 1800s early 1900s and it's just crazy to me to see something that's been sitting in that same spot for so long undisturbed and still be able to read the numbers on mm -hmm. like erosion or whatever yeah taking care definitely or a tractor hadn't and... pushed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you see some some with piled up stones, but I guess that just may be property markers and not not your corner, right? Not your corner stones. Mm -hmm. Well, in a like in the downtown area, would there be some in a more populated area mm. that's still preserved? Not really. No. Mm -mm. So it it's be, not very common. Then it just comes down to property lines and. Yeah, the ones downtown in subdivisions and in cities, um, in city limits and whatnot, those are usually um, like those metal pins, those metal rebars that have already been reset. So that's a big, um, it's a big decision for PLS is if you find a corner that's destroyed, it's not existing, you go out to the next ones and you find those and then you have to set, reset that corner but you know, all of the liability is on you because you're saying, hey, this corner is right here. So if someone comes in after you and calculates a different location for that corner, you know, it could throw a lot off. It could cause a lot of problems. So there's a lot on their shoulders. Well, some legal, legal aspects. Definitely. Well, is there liability insurance like there is in <laughs> other businesses? I would assume. I haven't gotten into any of that, so. Well, we'll yeah. there might be something mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. And see, two property owners clashing over, you know, no, I've got two more feet. No, mm -hmm. it's on my side, actually. Yeah. Or cut down trees that are on someone's mm -hmm. property, not, yeah. not yours. Mm. So you need to be aware of state laws. Right. Yeah. A lot of a lot of things to consider. It's 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 a little intimidating. It's a long way from vet med. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. But it's still the same. A lot of different parts like vet med. So you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're keeping your mind active with all of this. I guess solving yeah. problems. Yeah. Must be good at solving problems. Mm -hmm. I try. <laughs> well, what are some of the tools you use? Um, so we use, um, every day we probably use, um, shovels. Um, we have, we use a chainsaw pretty often. Um, sledgehammers, hammers, um, we have the equipment that we, um, that we use. It's just a rod with our survey equipment on it. We carry that around every single day. Um, that's pretty much it. But that probably hasn't changed much since you got into the into the business. No, I mean, thirty years ago, I'm sure it was right. a little bit, a little bit different. Yeah, anyway. they didn't have all of this technology. And to use a drone, 
No, the state is actually, I believe they're very interested in getting that. For the photo? To incorporate it and have, you know, someone in each area of the state licensed to fly that. So that's something I'm also looking into is getting a, a license for the, to fly the drones. Um, so if the state ever does acquire that, that's something that we can start utilizing. It'd be, I think it'd be great. It saves some time, I would, oh, I would definitely. Poss possibly. Yeah, just in the, in the six years that I've been here, a lot has changed just with all the technology. And um, they are working uh, on just improving that. I mean, they keep telling us, oh, within the next five years, you'll be able to survey from your, from your cell phone. <laughs> so, I mean, it's all great and whatnot. Um, technology is definitely a part of our life and our world these days and um i think it's i think it's actually great i think it's a great thing and it's something you kind of have to adapt to and and learn to kind of um roll with the changes on it because if not you're going to kind of get left behind but i think it's i'm definitely behind behind it i mean it's great so you'll have refresher courses occasionally you know, re yeah required or well, ODOT, they're very big on, like I said, education, and they like, um, they, they, um, they offer a lot of training, and they offer a lot of the training periodically, you know, when we acquire new um, employees, and I, they say, you know, if you want to sit in on it, you can, it's open to everybody, even if you've taken it. So every time it's open, I always sign up and say, okay, because every single time I take that same training, I learn something new that I didn't know before. So um, they're great about opening up all of that to everybody. Never a dull moment, does it sound mm -mm. like? <laughs> no, there's not. So you do most of your work on the computer? Most? Yeah, about 90% of my work on the computer. Mm -hmm. And then out in the car a vehicle about some of the other time right? yeah i'll go out and meet with locators and um it, we have a new employee now and so sometimes i'll go out there and kind of say hey this is how this goes show them the ropes and whatnot and what we expect but uh no most of the times just in the in the office just on the computer drafting are your new employees surprised that a woman's in charge um no not really um i've I know both of them, and one of them actually is another woman that I brought in, and uh, they're both doing great, and we all get along, and I mean, we're, I think we make a really good team. Good. Across the state, is there anyone else that's same level as you that's female? There is. There is, there is one other female. She's on, I believe, the Sulphur Crew, um, and she's been, she's been here longer than I have, but she's also trying to obtain her degree as well. Not her degree, her license. her license. Yes. So far, no one has that if you're trying to get in. Okay. we got to get there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will you, get a, will you get a salary or a pay increase when, once you get it? Yeah. Um, yes. It will be, I will step out of a transportation specialist position and into a professional license surveyor position. So my boss and I would both share the same title and the same, we would just split the responsibilities in our office. They'll keep keep you, or they won't want to send you to a different office at that point. No, I would have the choice. I mean, we have the opportunity. I think we have like four other offices right now that have openings, mm -hmm. and um, moving's just kind of not an option for me with the kiddos here and my husband's job and whatnot. Right. Um, but it wouldn't be required. You no. Know, you could choose to or not. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, a lot, a lot of uh, territory to cover. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh. What's your favorite part of the job? Um, just being outside. I love it. It's so much fun. And um, we'll have projects that last eight, eight months to a year. And it just never gets old to me. I mean, there's the projects are so big. We were just on different areas of it at different times. And there's some days when it gets a little hot and uh, some days when it's a little too cold, but I'm just happy to be outside and just to be, you know, I just, the outdoors, I just love it. And the McAllister area, what would be one of your bigger projects? Well, we did, um, 
I've only had one project in this area and it was on this stretch going west here, going to the turnpike. I believe you come through that way, but there was stoplights at every single intersection going down that road. I think it was like six or seven. And we did a project there and uh, they ended up taking all those stoplights out. But that was a very big, very clustered, a lot of detail in that, in that project. Every manhole throughout the city on that stretch of highway, we had to, we had to pop every manhole and I have to draw in every single pipe coming in and out of those manholes and pretty much show, you know, the, the sewer structure and the, uh, the storm drain structure underground. And it was a, it's kind of a rush job too. So it was, a, it was, that one was a little challenging. Would you have to go out and explain to the public, like have the town halls, for lack of a better word, where you, they would ask questions and no. you guys explain? Mm -mm. People are just used to seeing that ODOT sign mm -hmm. under construction or whatever. Yep, <laughs> pretty much. So how far out does your area reach then? Well, we have a, a, a crew that works out of Antlers, and then we have one that works out of uh, Muskogee, and we have one that works out of Ada. So we pretty much cover anything from here over to the state line, and I believe from here to around Calvin. And then up north we go to about I-40, and um, south, I'd say we go to about Atoka. Okay, so not entirely the southeast quarter of the state, no. but close, close yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. Do you get, do anything with the mines? We have had, um, we did have a project out south of here that had some old um, coal mines on the um, on the project, and that was really really neat to see it had a lot of um a lot of the tracks for the cars like the old tracks for the mining cars going down into the mines they were still out there and um i'm not sure what they're called but just the big holding areas for i guess all the coal that they mined there's they're all crumbled structures but there's some of them still standing a lot of the mine entrances are still out there and uh of course, they're blocked off, but it was it was really really neat seeing that stuff and learning about it. So, what would what would your role be there to just map out what was there? Or yeah, what? we show everything on the surface, and then we just make sure to note on our survey before we submit it certain things about that area. If there's a uh, like a hazardous waste area, we'd go out there and topo it, and then just note, hey, this area is has hazardous waste um, and just kind of be as um, detailed as possible of what's out there. Do you do a similar site with oil drill wells and that sort of thing? Um, there might be a different department that does that. Yeah, well, I've never really run into a whole lot of, they don't, I don't believe those are very um, close to the highway. I think they can, they're pretty much off the highway enough to where they're not included on our surveys. Okay, so you're nice. Transportation, you have to keep that in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just state highways, yeah. <laughs> Not tourism or right. oil and gas or mm -hmm. whatever. So you spend some time at the courthouse? Yes, we go out and we do um, research on who owns um, property that touches our project. And um, we make copies of all the deeds of every every property um, and then we come into the office and we draw up a, like a plat and we put, you know, the, the landowners of every property and how much land they own and it's all to scale and we submit that with our survey so they know who to contact. What if in that process there's not a clear lot <coughs> of ownership, you know, clear deed, as they say? Well, um, I believe... I don't think I've really run into that very much, but I believe that's. Um, I'm just thinking if, if you're a professional licensed, you might run into it at, at some point and have to deal with the legal aspects of fallout from that. Yeah. Um, like I said, I haven't had a lot of experience with that, so I wouldn't really know what the process would be. I think in the, in the private sector, they would be more likely to have that issue, I guess. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So if you had to do it all over again, would you take this same path? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, 
feel like I like I'm pretty happy with where I've wound up and uh I feel like everything happens for a reason. So, um, yeah, I, I think I would. And your parents survived, surprised that you went, went this route? Definitely. Um, my sister, she is, I believe, the second female firefighter for the city of McAllister. So she's kind of in the same, we're both kind of, you know, alike in that aspect. So a lot of people see us and they're like, oh yeah, my main name's Radosevich. So, Oh, the Radosevich girls, you know, one's a firefighter, one's a surveyor, and, and we're just kind of, you know, those two girls that are out there doing a man's job, they just didn't expect it out of us. Which one do you think you surprised more, your mom or your dad, by choosing this path? Um, <laughs> so, uh, my mom passed away when I was 17. She, so yeah. she, yeah. Um, but my dad, he's very proud of both of us. Very proud of us. I mean, he's always there for us and anything we need, he's retired. So he just sits around all day with his dog and his cat. Anything you need, babysitting, want to go out to lunch, <laughs> you just let me know, <laughs> you know. And then yeah. you have a brother. I do. Yeah. What, and what does he do? So he has a bachelor's in kinesiology and I believe he is trying to obtain his license to become a physical therapist, I believe, or I think it's the physical therapy, yeah. And your dad's in rehab, so that's mm -hmm. similar, yeah. similar to that one. Mm -hmm. well, all, all of you are making great strides yeah. and moving We're forward. We're trying. <laughs> yeah. So if you become the chief and then your sister can become the, the chief of the fire yeah. department, then... Yeah, I think, I think mom would be very proud. Still in <laughs> there? Yeah, so... <laughs> Who gets yeah. there first? So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you have boys, so mm -hmm. girls, you would encourage. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give some young girl that was thinking, you know, what are my options for? Well, um, I mean, I definitely felt like the odds were against me when I first started, definitely. Um, I knew it was male dominated and um, that I was just going to have to adapt. But I believe. Um, working with ODOT that that was just one of the biggest factors with how supportive they were especially I wasn't even I don't believe I was even here a year um, whenever I found out that I had cancer and they just took me in like their own you know if you need time off you let us know if you need to work from home you let us know if you need this and if you need that um, they took up donations um, I mean they offered me everything under the sun because they wanted to see me succeed. So my advice is to go, is to find that support system that is there for you and um, just harness it and just don't give up. I mean, it, it does get hard. And if I could go through having cancer and going to school full time and working full time and having those, those two ornery little boys at that one time, then, you know, anybody can do anything, anybody can. Seems like attitude might have something to definitely, do with it. Definitely. My mom, she was always, any little accomplishment that any of us had, she just praised us and just, just multiplied it by a thousand and just made us feel very accomplished. And we felt good that we made her proud. So um, I feel like it's, it's that support system that you need to have and whenever she passed you know I lost I felt like I lost a lot of that so I had to go out and find mine and when I came to ODOT I felt like here it is I found it well your personality being bubbly and would help I would imagine too yeah definitely I think of being a social person and just you know kind and friendly I think that um, that really really helps a lot and you don't seem to be off-putting like you know you're, you're a woman you've got you know you've got something to mm -hmm. prove just get out of my way and let me do it right it's not quite it's not that way no I'm just here doing what I love and you know if you don't like it then that's okay if you do that's great so was there a, a day that you thought oh, I just can't do this when you first started out yeah um it was I had met with a locator and he wasn't he was, I mean, he wasn't very nice at all. And I came home that night and I was crying and I told my husband, you know, 
maybe he's right. Maybe it's not for me. Maybe it's not safe or a man should be doing this job. And he said, no, you're where you need to be. Don't let it get you down. It's just one person. It's okay. And I, I just stuck with it. A day at a time for mm-hmm. a little while. Yeah. So having husband support was a definitely. Bit of a big yeah, he has been just above and beyond supportive of everything. It's 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 not very um, common to see, you know, a, a, a male supporting a female in a male dominant field at all. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of fear of what could happen, but um, he's been great. He's been wonderful. Stay in touch during the day too with cell phones are great. Oh, we do. Help for that, yeah. Yeah. Try to have lunch when we can. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, at least, least favorite, I guess, would be would be the I'm not getting cooperation with the landowner. Then mm-hmm. would be your oh, definitely. It's been we've had a few scary moments, which I think a lot of um, our crews have gone through. Of you know, just people being very protective of their land and grab their shotgun and come out on the porch, you know, kind of thing. So Has that happened with you? Yeah, it has. Huh. We're just told just to leave them alone. <laughs> How about yeah. dogs? Yeah, there's been a lot of, you know, we have to watch that too. and Or just a lot of, um, like, there's just been a lot of, uh, like, they just don't cooperate. Well, if they're not home during the day, we'll leave cards and notes and letters. Hey, we need permission give us a call and and uh we'll go back multiple times and we just know that they're just avoiding us but yeah it happens part of the job job and then out in all kinds of terrain you said definitely there's snakes definitely poison ivy i'm highly allergic to poison ivy and i didn't find that out until i started working here and uh yeah snakes poison ivy um it's, I mean, just all the hazards that come with being outside. So I'm thinking if you're in a swamp, you need waders. waders. Mm-hmm. Which back then we didn't have that. So we were in our jeans just up to our, we were, I mean, waist deep in the swamp. And uh, no, hmm. just, our, just our work, our work shoes and jeans and t-shirt and, oh, well, we got to find this corner. And I mean, we waded through that swamp and then left. It was summer, thank goodness, but. Oh, yeah. And then you get to clean up or do you have to stay in that the rest of the I, well, I didn't expect it, so I didn't bring a change of clothes that day. I just I just air dried before I got back in the truck. <laughs> but, I mean, I didn't mind it. Mm-hmm. So you learned a lesson to have a spare set yep. somewhere. Definitely. Keep your boots with you and keep a spare change of clothes for sure. Mm-hmm. And do you carry, carry a camera with you? A camera? Uh-huh. I guess your cell phone would do a camera yeah. if you needed a picture or something. Yep. Yeah, just keep my phones on us. I think it appears you're doing. Mm-hmm. It might help with memory when you get back. Oh, yeah. I did see this here. Mm-hmm. So. Definitely. Well, when you're doing, getting easements and stuff like that, do you have to worry about, I don't know, historical markers or trees that people don't want cut down or... Some stuff like that. Definitely, that's something that comes with getting permission to be on their property mm-hmm. is, hey, we don't cut down these certain trees, but if there's a tree we need to cut down, are you okay with it? And, you know, is there anything that you would like for us to follow? And um, most of it's, you know, just don't climb over my fence, go through my gates mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, and shut the gate. Definitely. <laughs> um, don't drive through my property, things like that. Um, just to respect their their property is pretty much it. Well, I, are most of them <coughs> one, owners like that mostly males? Yes. For the most part. I mean, yes. I'm sure there's probably a female too or mm-hmm. out there, but mostly. Yeah, I had an male. encounter with a, um, with a female and uh, it was, I mean, we weren't, I think we were like 150 feet off the highway into her property and her house sat further off. And I tried to get a hold of her and tried to get a hold of her and she, I could just never catch her. And I was advised by my supervisor at the time, well, just go out there and just, just get that topo. It's just pasture. Just go get that topo and, and get off of her land. Okay. So I did. And um, she caught me out there. She come home and see me out there. And she just beelined it to me. And 
you know, and I'm just, ma'am, I'm sorry. I tried to get a hold of you. This is all I'm doing. And I just tried to explain it to her. And uh, will you get what you need and you just, you get off my property? Yes, ma'am. And uh, that very next week we were, um, we were stopping traffic on the highway. It's just too, a little, little two lane highway. And we were trying to find a, a corner, a pin in the middle of the road. And uh, she happened to come through where we were stopping traffic and she pulled over and I recognized her car. She got out of her car and she starts walking towards me and I'm thinking, oh, here we go. <laughs> and she pulled me to the side and she apologized. I'm sorry, I, you know, I come across that way. You're just doing your job. And, and uh, you know, I said, ma'am, it's fine. I understand. I, you know, I would probably have the same reaction if I found someone on my property, but you know, that's just where the, the patience comes in and the try to put yourself in their, in their shoes situation kind of comes into play. So I feel, you know, I can't, I can't really be out there with a chip on my shoulder thinking, oh, I can, I can do whatever I want. I work for the state kind of, it's just, it's not like that. It's just, you're just trying to protect their land and sometimes they don't understand and, and you kind of have to give them the benefit of the doubt. How did you learn those type of things, though? Just, um, just I guess just common from, sense, and you're that's just kind of how my mom raised me, <laughs> kind of okay. thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. So, who, who have you had a mentor along the way, whether work wise or anyone that you you look up to is okay? Yeah, um, work wise, not really. No, I I mean, other than just. ODOT as a whole really just being there for me but um, personally um, my mom had two best friends that were there for her um, for the time that they knew her and like I kind of they've kind of stepped into my mom's role when she passed so I just know we can go we could go a year without speaking and run into each other and just it's like we never missed a second and so um, yeah, her friends really just took me in like like their own when she passed because she made such a huge impact on their on their life and um, they make sure to emphasize birthdays and just my cancer anniversary and they'll just write me a letter, or send me something saying, you know, your mother would want you to know this or have this and she's very proud of you. So yeah, my mom's friends they're they've really played a a big role in helping me become the person who I am. And I guess she herself too. From Definitely, what, yeah. Person, I person still strive person. to make her proud every day. Yeah. yeah. Well, as you're studying for this next level, mm-hmm. uh, is that like after? I mean, how, how many hours a day are you doing at prepping, prepping for that? Well, I try to. So I go to work, come home, and. Uh, me and my husband and my two sons we get ready and we go to the gym and we go work out five days a week so we do that and then i try to take at least an hour or two in the evenings and i'll go over some questions and um if i have trouble on some you know i'll i'll just spend that evening working on those or um, I'll say, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to do these five questions or I'm just going to read all about law tonight or, you know, I just pick an area to focus on, on each evening. So, um, my mom, when I remember when we were growing up, when we moved here from Puerto Rico, she was driving to Ada to ECU and she, all three of us were in diapers. I can remember it. She um, she obtained her master's degree with all three of us, and we were driving back and forth to EC for her classes. My grandparents lived over there, and they would take care of us while she was in school. My dad was working. And what so, was her master's in? Hers was in um, it was a science. Um, there was a lot of uh, I want to say it was like an environmental science. There was a lot of soils and rocks and mm-hmm. bugs and whatnot. Well, that should definitely be interested in what you're doing today. Definitely, I think so. Well, she was a role model too, showing mm-hmm. you how you can juggle, you know, she family, was. family education and mm-hmm. work and yeah, all of that. Definitely get it from her. Mm-hmm. Do you want to say her name? Her name is Jacqueline Radosevich. 
we won't be able to spell that. <laughs> okay. And your dad's. His name's Anthony Radosevich. Anthony, Anthony. We'll have to work on the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you've been in this position, so you said since for six years. So that would have been from when you to twenty thirteen. Mm-hmm. So before that was when you were just on the on the crew. Oh or, or? well, um, I started with ODOT in twenty thirteen. Okay. So I've been in the same um, job title, just different levels. Okay. Over the last six years. So from you left OSU in O. Eight-ish. Oh, eight. So that would have been what, five years in there. You were you were with DHS those for, for those most no, of those five years. I was only with DHS for six months before I started here. So you before really that, that. <laughs> I was still I'd enrolled back in college at um, Eastern in Wilberton, and I went into um, pre nursing, doing getting all my prerequisites for nursing, and. Um, then I found out I was pregnant and you can't you can't go through nursing and have you know be pregnant uh, and you know there's a lot of it's very you can't really work during that clinical program. would be hard yes, yeah. definitely so I kind of took it as a sign hey this isn't the the uh, path for me so it was hard I let it go and my husband said you'll find something you'll figure out what you need to do and he's, he's, you know, I think I was 22, 23 at the time. And uh, he um, he supported me. I went through, you know, I did some waitressing. I did um, just little jobs here and there. And I found a, oh, it was an office job for a company. And uh, I worked there for two years. And it just, I just didn't like sitting in an office all day. so. I applied for DHS thinking, oh, well, I could, you know, I'll be doing house visits, this and that. Mm-hmm. I did it for six months, and uh, those are very, very special people, very special. It was it was very depressing seeing all those children, but I couldn't, I begged my husband, I said, let's become foster parents, let's adopt all these kids, and he's just like, whew, I don't know about that, but um, I said, I got to get out of here. I'm just, I'm at this desk every day and I just, it's not for me. And so I seen the, the job posting and I said, well, let's try this out. Sent in for the interview. The guys were awesome, really cool down to earth. Talked to my husband about it. He's like, if it's, if you want to try it out, try it out. And I did. And I come back my first day and I said, this is it. This is it. It's awesome. You can't beat having Fridays off. No. So. And that's year round. Mm-hmm. Friday's off. So where was it posted that you had seen it, like in the newspaper, or being a state employee? You had yeah, access to state. Mm-hmm. I just looked on the state website. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems to seems to have happened. The way yeah. it should have happened. I think so too. <laughs> mm-hmm. So let's see, if you could go back and tell your twelve year old self <laughs> something that. What would you tell them as far as career career wise goes? Forget Batman, start here for, to begin with. <laughs> no, because I really enjoyed uh, that year at, at OSU. Just all of the experience I had with all of the um, the other students, and I was in a bunch of clubs. They're the vet. They have clubs that go with certain degrees, I guess. But I was in like an ag club and. We just, we toured, um, I'll never forget it, but we toured the um, Jinx Aquarium and we got to go like behind the scenes and feed the sharks and touch all those animals and stuff. And that was just like one of the happiest days of my life. And um, I think the experiences that came with each path that I explored really, um, really just made me who I am now and I just I love adventure but it wasn't that it wasn't too, it wasn't that it was too hard for you mm-hmm. you just decided to go a different a different right. route mm-hmm. definitely homesick no not no, really just no just I love to different. love to travel love to see different things it's just you just you just you just when you know you know 
So as uh, switching gears a little bit, as a crew supervisor, how many how many's on a crew? Um, typically, there's four. Right now, we have um, we have three, and then plus my supervisor. So we're kind of one short right now. But um, the three that we have, me and the other two, it's it works. I mean, it's great. It's perfect. So what would each member of that crew? What would their their role be? Are are there differentiated enough to say what their role? Would not be? not really. They're so there's both of them are green enough to where they're kind of they're in the same areas. So they're both one. She's been here for two years. The other one's been here for seven or eight months, and uh, they um they, I think they help each other. They learn from each other, and because uh, our new one, he just came from a uh, utility locating company so there's things on that side that he knows that we don't know I'm learning things from him and uh, so um, and then there's things of course that she knows she's you know very comfortable with our equipment so she's she's training him on use, using our equipment and uh, but we're all I mean we're all constantly learning from each other it doesn't matter how long we've been here so if you have a question you just yeah just go ask, ask anybody ask <laughs> yeah do you, I, I, I probably know the answer to this while asking like, any interaction with the prison probably not so much the prison yeah since it's transportation probably not so much um we used to um have a contract with the prison to um for like their trustees to come pick up trash hmm. and that was interesting we didn't renew our contract i don't i believe i don't know why i've just we haven't had inmates i don't believe for like a year now but um they were trustees and I mean, they were, they were interesting. They were nice to have around and joke around with and, and uh, they're very polite, but um, that's as much interaction as we got with them. When people mention McAllister, that's the first thing they think in prison. So that's all I'd ask. Yeah, we get a lot of, a lot of that. We had a, uh, <laughs> our chief, he wasn't our chief now, he wasn't our chief back then, but we had an, um, we had an old inmate uniform laying around and he he came to visit our office years ago and one of the um, maintenance workers put that that uniform on and they were all scared to death of the inmates in the prison and because I always hear of all these people escaping but um, yeah he come he come over there in this inmate uniform and walked in there and they just kind of just froze because an inmate was in there. <laughs> but we, like I said, like that's all the interaction. We they they were nice. Never had any problems with them. And historically, they have helped with fix roads, repair roads, and, and yeah, stuff like they that, so. they they help um they help they help with the roads. They pick up the trash. I hear that they help with um, a lot of churches. They'll build, build pews for the churches. Um, they build picnic tables for us, you know, we use them, we used to use them for a lot of things. They were very helpful, but a lot of people ask, you know, what do you do when an, an inmate escapes? And just, nothing really. Yeah, <laughs> they usually know. leave, so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not really uh -uh. scary. <laughs> you, get near, you have to just be practice safety out on the side anyway. Yeah. You know, first day and all that too, you probably be part of someone would have to have first aid. Yeah, we have to have um, CPR, first aid certification every three years. So we have to stay up to date on all of that. That wouldn't necessarily show up on your professional test that you'll be taking. That's more mm -hmm. the technical side of, yeah. the, of surveying. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. I guess still some of your science and math and all that still gets in there too. The it's a broad, broader area than when you first start thinking, okay, what does a land surveyor do? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. So your hardest class? Oh, you said, yeah, we already asked that. Your easiest class then? Easiest would probably be my history classes. I love history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was just, it just, I was very interested. So it just, uh, it just kind of came to me naturally. I mean, I had to take some history for, um, I think that was some of my prereqs in nursing, some history, but um, 
it was um it became pretty easy to me okay so once you get your professional license and we're going to get it mm -hmm. will you interact with other other conferences i mean how does the level of that you know other professional land surveyors do they meet once a year annual conferences that type of thing yes we do have an annual conference in um, Midwest City every year and um, that is something that ODOT has opened up to all the PLS's plus plus one so it's, it's usually their crew supervisor so for the last I believe it's the last four years I've gone to that and it's it's really opened up a lot of doors and opportunities because you meet so many private surveyors from the state and other states. There's some that are registered in multiple states from Texas, Kansas, Arkansas, and they come to our conference. And it's it's really interesting to see um, just the different, there's a lot of um, diversity and um, there's quite a few women also on the private side. And there's some that are husband and wife that own private companies together and it's it's just it's nice to see that that part of it and it's nice to um, see the opportunity that's available and it's not um, I don't think that the public understands the need for this profession the what I mean we're just so the turnover is just is just unbelievable and um, I feel like if we could just get out there and, and, and go to these high schools and show them, hey, this is this is what we need. It's a great opportunity. Um, you know, if you love the outdoors and just explain to them that they might start looking into this program and looking into this opportunity. But I just don't think that there's enough of, um, what would you call it, advertisement for it really and awareness of it. That's it, I mean, it's hard is that why people don't go into it do you think and why do people get out of it if it's um turnover well the turnover rate on that it's 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 for ODOT it's mainly just the pay I'll go into the private right yeah. but um you know I haven't really talked to enough people to see why they don't look into it I don't know if it's the degree that scares them or you know the math part of it or if it's just the sheer um physical labor that they're just not wanting to do but uh it's just hard to find good help you know and um a lot of people um i just don't think that the education on it is really out there for it i think they look at it in a completely different way than what it really is that public facing part like we never knows what a nurse does right and the transportation folks you just think of the mm -hmm. flag person yeah. directing traffic so much yeah. but patching potholes and they don't want to get out there in that yeah uh, it's really not it's so much more than that no and then uh, when you do like uh, bypasses for a town I guess that's part of would fall into you too you know, surveying make sure going to swing around the town mm -hmm. instead of down, downtown that, that could be uh, an issue too with business owners and such. So definitely. Hmm. Well, how can we get into how can we get into high schools? I guess is the mm -hmm. how early do you need to start? I guess even sixth grade enough. I guess. Yeah, I mean that's definitely that something that I've um, communicated with Oklahoma City is something about getting some kind of some kind of presentation together and, and reaching out to these schools saying, hey, on your career day, think of us. And if you want us to come out, you know, we'd love to, to spread the word on it. And uh, so that's something that's actually in the works right now. So I'm pretty excited about it. Too bad you can't, there isn't, wouldn't be a way to hook into like 4-H or FFA or, mm -hmm. I mean, I know they have a range management thing every year. Right. Kids come in from, all over to mm -hmm. do. Maybe it's not broad enough, I guess, to right. reach out that far. Career day, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a bunch of, um, what do you call it, those career, um, oh, we have them at the expo, the career, like the job expos where you come out and apply for jobs. I'm 
I've even offered, hey, let's just put a booth out there to, just to show them, hey, this is what it's all about. We may not be hiring right now, but we definitely love if you um, would leave a resume. So when we are, you know, if you're interested, we'd consider you. But um, I think that's not, our chief, he, um, I believe he's been our chief for a little over a year now. And he has, he has changed um, a lot and it's, it's good changes. And his, like I said, his big thing is um, education and getting the knowledge of it out there. So he's definitely on board with it. It's just a process of getting it all done. To do a video. Mm -hmm. Yes. A day on the job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't podcast what we really do. You need the visual to mm -hmm. get people interested in it too. Definitely. And if it's a career, um, I guess, well, once you get into this, you can stay until you retire, I guess, mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to and move around still. Yep. Even within the department, if you get bored in one area, mm -hmm. switch gears and go into something else. Right. Uh, you see yourself staying until, staying with the department here on yeah. 20 years or whatever. I do. I think I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I think I'll retire from, from our McAllister office. Well, do you have a work philosophy? Or mantra or whatever you begin your day with or um I just try to just begin my day on a positive note and just to remember you know just to take it one day at a time one thing at a time and um to just be kind just be nice pretty much it's you know don't don't bring work home with you and vice versa well, when you've had a, a regular, a, a bad day, mm -hmm. you know, you're, I can't imagine you having a temper. <laughs> just listening to you here. So how do you release that? Oh, you go to the gym. We go to the gym. Yep. Or, you know, um, we're big into hunting and fishing. And so um, in the evenings, we've got beagles. Me and my um, kids will let the, the beagles out and go look for a rabbit and just listen to them. Um, we've got a pond in the yard. And we'll just grab our fishing poles and go fishing. Um, if it's deer season, we'll grab our guns or our bows and head to the to the stand and go sit and watch some deer come in. But and you go. Yep. Yep. Last year on Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving morning we went out and my youngest. It was his first year. He wanted a bow for his birthday, so that's what he got last year. It was a compound bow. And uh, it was September 1st was his birthday. And on Thanksgiving day, um, we went to, we went hunting. My oldest went with my husband and my youngest sat with me. And a, uh, a, a doe came into our blind and I texted my husband. I said, hey, we've got a doe. He said, it's really early in the evening. Let's just wait, see if anything comes in. It's okay. And, uh, She's he uh, she sat there for a good forty five minutes eating and I said she's still here and he said okay let her let him shoot her and I said okay and so he gets up there and he's it's his, he's nervous six, he was five no he was six he was six gets up there really nervous shaking and he's just I can't do it mom I can't do it I can't do it all right well she ends up walking away well my husband texts me and said hey there's a little bitty five point buck here. You know, he's going to shoot it. And I said, okay. So they shoot it. He sends us a picture of him and his his brother and his little buck. And my youngest, he started crying. He's so heartbroken because his brother got a deer and he didn't. He's never shot one before. So um, I said, it's okay. You know, we still have some time before it gets dark. And he cried and he cried and he cried and he ended up falling asleep in my lap. And um, my husband texted me and he said, we've got, her clean, we've got him cleaned up. We're coming to get y'all. And I said, let's just wait a little bit. And uh, he said, all right. And sure enough, that doe walks right back in and I wake him up and I get him all set up and just talked him through it. And he shot her and he killed her. So Thanksgiving night, my oldest brought home a buck and my youngest brought home a doe. And it was like the most proud moment I've ever had for both of them. It was just, it was amazing. I could have just cried. It was great. How had you learned? I mean. Is that something your dad did with you or your no. husband? Or? Mm -hmm. That was something my husband introduced me to when I met him at 16. Never hunted, never really did any of that. And he, he, that was, 
when I met him, I was 16 and that's the first time I've ever, I ever drank sweet tea. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he taught me a lot, but I come to love the outdoors. You wanted to be a vet and then a nurse, but you but you hunt. That seems to be a I know, right? contradiction there. Yep. Yeah, I know. It's uh it's it's kinda it is a little bit of contradiction, but yeah. Did did you eat the deer? I mean it was it was it wasn't for sport, it was for Right, deer. yeah. That's something we do is we and my youngest, um, his name's Brixton. He um he will fight you for the heart. He loves deer heart. He will eat the whole heart by himself. I mean, it's just unheard of, but he that's his favorite part of the deer is eating the deer heart. Huh. It's pretty neat. What have any idea what that would taste like? It's pretty good. You should try it. <laughs> the deer I've had, but the, the heart part, no, I don't know that yeah. I could. I don't think that I could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. No, it's like catching a fish. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're both. I'm very proud of both of them. They're very um, outdoorsy. We trap raccoons, and they love doing that. See, in my mind, that gives you some other levels to playing field, even more with male male employees that you mm -hmm. can you can talk hunting with. Definitely, them and, yeah. And not get you know, squeamish mm -hmm. on the inside, right? <laughs> yeah, like some of those would. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we've covered a lot. Is there anything that we haven't that we need to, to do? Your stamina you're taking care of because you work out, and I'm sure that helps. <laughs> it definitely does. Yeah, has being a female, you think, shaped your career in some way? I feel like it has, yeah. I mean, I get a lot of... Um, assumptions on how that's worked out but um i feel like i have for the most part worked for everything that i've achieved yeah but i do think that you know it's very um surprising when a fee they expect you know a male to walk in and a female walks in or you know if they expect to call the survey office and talk to a male and the female answers and hey can I talk to whoever's in charge yeah that's me what can I help you with and they're just like oh you know but um I feel like I get a lot more respect than I do disrespect when it comes to that you know I, I do have I, there are a lot more people that are just um supportive of it and um you know they say you know I'm, I'm very impressed that a young woman like you has such a good work ethic and can get out there and do that that manual labor like that and you just don't see that very often and so I feel like I get a lot more respect but it is expected to have those few here and there that are like I say old school about it <laughs> some of them test your knowledge yeah see so, you know, you know, yeah, I know that yeah mm -hmm. prove, prove them wrong mm-hmm uh, in a nice way. Right. <laughs> in a nice way. I would say that too. Highlights. Do you have a highlight of, of career career highlights so far? Um, I would say graduating that um, that survey program really like I that was just one of my proudest moments to have my my sons and everybody there to watch it happen and I feel like. Um, it's a good, it gives them something to look forward to and it gives them someone to look up to and they're like, I want to be that role model for them and, and show them, hey, you know, you're gonna have to work for what you want and if you're gonna do something, you be the best at it and do it the best you can. So, um, yeah, like I'm still on cloud nine from graduation day, just walking across that stage and being able to see my, my sons and them waving at me and it was just it was a great day so go back and get a, a bachelor's and then a master's mm -hmm. yourself at some point maybe yeah i've looked into um going back for engineering and getting my engineering license as well because it kind of goes hand in hand mm -hmm. so um once i get this one out of the way i'll start looking into um what the education part of that consists of and Possibly doing that. Well, it's different. Civil engineering or mm -hmm. something different. Yeah, it's civil. I mean, there's so many 
I'm yeah. learning. There's there is very <laughs> choices for engineering. Definitely. So, what would be the closest program? OU, I mean, that Oklahoma City again. Um, I believe Oklahoma City is looking into making their civil engineering 100% online as well. Oh, well, that but that would be handy too. Definitely. Yeah. All right, and then maybe teach someday. Maybe. Yeah, if, least, if the college here decides to offer it, that would be yeah, one class a semester or something. Mm -hmm. adjunct. I can see that good role model for those. Oh know. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a good career so far, huh? Yes, and it just keeps getting better. Wow. Well, that covers everything I've got, unless there's something you want to say. No, I think that's all. I usually end up with having people tell me, you know, if, if history is written about you, what would you like for it to say? Yeah. How, how, how do you want to be remembered? You're too young, but <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, but <laughs> um, just just do what makes you happy and 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 what you believe in, and just work as hard as you can, and don't let anybody else's um, opinions define who you are okay. yeah. you live you live that sounds like too yeah i try to okay well thank you very much thank you i appreciate it